I have killed Uber Duriel over six hundred times. And I have a lot of things to say. Hello, my fellow Duriel mass murderers. How are you doing today? Well, depending on how lucky you've gotten or not gotten, that answer might vary. And it might vary much more than just today. How have you been doing in Season 2? Well, again, the answer to that question may well depend on the amount and variety of Uber Uniques sat in your stash or indeed equipped on your character. Now, of course, that is not to say nor imply that Season 2 hasn't been relative to Season 1 and pre-season, fantastic and definitely the best Diablo 4 has ever been. I now consider it to be, you know, yeah, not bad, fun, all right, you know, and that's that's uh, that's not the craziest of bars, but it's at least a bar now, and I think it will only get better in Season 3 and onwards. There's a few very important things that need to happen. Gear needs a little bit reworking in its itemization. We need aspects and codexes yesterday, and uh, we uh, need to have a loot filter to mention three, but look, Season 2, yeah. But one of the big deals in Season 2 is the unique bosses, and the uh, main one being Duriel and his uber unique dropping properties. It's created this fixation on it, because once you get to level 100, you've got all your glyphs to level 21, you've got the perfect min-maxed build with the perfect min-max gear, and there's kind of nothing left other than... It would sure be cool to have an uber unique or two, and thus you farm, you farm Gregor, you farm Varshan, you farm gold and buy the materials. You farm in any way that you can, and they have made said farming a little bit easier with the Helltide changes, but either way, you do in fact farm. And, well, in that, it creates both excitement when it happens for you, but also a lot of problems, because it takes a lot of time to farm. Just the time I've spent killing him totals around 25 hours, but if we include the time spent farming him, we're easily up to 40-45, which seems kind of ridiculous when you say it like that. Even for an ARPG where grinding gear and mobs is the point, that is a long time to be spending dedicated to just repeatedly killing the same boss over and over again for a, at this point, I'm going to say less than 1% drop chance. And if it wasn't for Abattoir of Zer on the way, I honestly probably would have stopped long before now. But with how hard they have said uh, actually beating the max tier 25 is going to be, I kind of want the Uber Uniques to help me along the way. It might end up being a requirement. Which I would argue is going to be a bad thing if that's so, because already you have to complete the season journey, get to level 100, get a lot of preparation done, really push your character to the max, if you then have to not just get a lucky, minuscule drop chance, but the right one, and not one of the kind of, nah, ones like Andariel's or Starless Skies, just to have a shot at the highest echelons, I think that's going to cause some some anger, some issues, some mild backlash, to say the least. Granted, you're not supposed to beat all 25 ranks in the sense that it's like a definitive goal. You're just supposed to play through them, have fun, get as far as you can get, and it's a challenge that's there to be pushed, right? I doubt there's going to be some significant crazy reward at the end that everyone's going to need and want, and not getting it's going to feel bad, but I do think there is going to be an element of I would like to beat tier 25, and most classes and builds can't do that without a Uber Unique. That's a shame. And that's its whole other kettle of fish that we will, uh, well, see how it plays out, and I have no doubt discuss in the future. But all of that aside then, yeah, I have killed Ubedurial 600 times, and I wanted to talk about that. And while that is what I've been doing, I think specifically you're probably curious as to the results of those kills and how I feel about the actual system itself, the unique dropping bosses and the farming of them. I don't think it's inherently bad to have this uberdurial sort of culture that sprung up, the constant uh, cycles, people grouping in, doing rotations, trying not to get scammed by people claiming to have materials when they don't, that's a whole other issue. But there has been this element of 
of something to keep on doing, especially when there is content coming to use it on, and I definitely think in the sense of adding more longevity to the season after season one's essentially, oh, it's been a week and a half, well, I'm done with season one, is an overall good thing, but I do think there is some roughness to it and some issues that need solving, and that's to be expected with the first go-around. I have no doubt, or at least I have hope, that the unique boss dropping system will refine and get better as we go through it. In any case then, what have I actually gotten so far? So, how many uber uniques have I gotten in over 600 Durial kills? The answer is... FIVE! Yay! <laughs> Look, it's... It's not the worst, I do think it's a little bit behind curve, and when you look at the actual results... Ah! So the first Uber Unique that I got was a Haverion Spear of Lycanda. Initially, I was disappointed with this, as everyone had talked about this when it first got introduced in Season 1, and it was like, eh, it's fine, but, you know, it's a little bit lame, probably the worst Uber Unique, but that, as it turns out, isn't the case. This is actually the best Uber Unique I've found by a country mile. It's actually the second best Uber Unique for Sorcerer, at least if you ignore Selig, as the ultimate immortal defensive option, but offensively, it's the second best after Shaco, which is just all-round best, and, well, look, I'm not here to get into the minutia. The point is, and I have an entire video slash build dedicated to talking about experimenting with and showing why a Haverion is so good, especially for upcoming Abattoir of Zer, this thing was actually a really good lucky find, and I'm really happy for it. The rest, however, less so. I've got them here in the order that they dropped. Next up was Andariel's Visage, which at the time was, yeah, okay, that's fun. The lifesteal's good. The poison might be worth playing around with. But as the near 20-minute video I've got up talking about this shows, it's actually kind of awful. And I won't get into detail here why, but... Yeah, it is. So, that was a shame, and as a sorcerer, yeah, if I was a rogue, I'd be a lot happier, but sadly not. Then I got a second and Ariel's. You know how anticlimactic it was to have three double helmet drops and none of them be Harlequin's crest? Like, I, I just, I wanted to cry, and that was a shame. Which then brings us to a unique the fourth, which was Ring of Starless Skies. Generally considered to be the worst one. It's good in niche build. It's great for Bone Spear Necromancer, but even then some of them don't use it. And it's okay for Ice Shards and Fireball. I would use this in my Fireball build if I ever do an update, which is certainly on the list to get round to. But it's still not, you know insane. It's definitely considered, and rightly so, on the lower end, so that was also a bit of an anticlimax, but not much of an anticlimax as my third Andariel's Visage. The less said about that, the better. So that's where the cards fell for me. So now that you know that, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of Kind of a little bit anticlimactic for me. Don't get me wrong, Ahaverion is the star of the show, and without it, I would feel like I genuinely have wasted every second, and it would suck. And my heart goes out to any of you that have poured tens of tens of tens of hours into farming Uberdurial to either get no Uber Unique, or only ones that kind of don't do anything for you, are kind of garbage, or just don't work. You know, no Shakos, no Seligs, no Grandfathers, no Doombringers, no Ahaverions, none of the, the big ones that we all really want and need. But it does mean that, statistically speaking, I have had a drop chance of less than 1% which is definitely a little bit of a sting when supposedly it should be around two, but again, that's just from a set of data killing Durial, so the true number is anyone's guess, but I do think it is in the half percent to one and a half percent range, and I think I've also gotten very unlucky to get Andariel's three times, as opposed to, you know, a Shaco or a Selig instead of one of those three. But I suppose when you only have five options, and you get one maybe every 100 kills, and then those five options, we're assuming, have equal chance to drop, yeah, you're gonna need to do it a while before you get one of each, unless you get extremely lucky. And therein lies my biggest issue with this. I think, on the whole, it is cool to have something to repeatedly do that has extra chance to get these defining items that are super powerful, that feel good to have, and that's all great. 
but because it's now possible to get them, not getting them feels frustrating, which is sort of ironic and almost an unavoidable problem, but back when they essentially didn't exist because the drop weight was too low, if, you know, someone got one, it's whatever, right? And for all intents and purposes, you can play and treat the game like those items aren't real, you don't care, you're not farming for them, because it's just not going to happen, you don't think about it, it's all good. But now you can farm for them, now it technically can happen, now it's a realistic possibility, but it's still really low. Every single Duriel that doesn't drop a newbie unique, is it just me or is there like this, <sighs> I guess we'll go again. And then when it does drop a double unique and it's, oh, it's just two, two normal uniques, okay. But then it does drop a newbie unique and, oh, that's not the one. I've already got that one. That one doesn't help me at all. Well, I've just wasted a hundred tries worth of luck. And yes, that's not how it works, but still, you create this sort of disappointment and that's a natural product of being able to create the happiness and excitement from them dropping. But my main argument right now is I think the disappointment created is actually greater than the excitement created. And that's sort of a problem, especially when we likely have content coming up uh, that benefits or perhaps even needs an uber unique, so not getting the right one feels like a big old kick in the teeth. And to me, the solution is clear. You don't need to change the drop rate. I think the drop rate is fine, maybe a little bit more, but getting one every 50 to 100 kills, okay. You know, it's a cool moment. You gotta put the time in. They are uber uniques. It gives you something to do. It's not the worst sitting with a group of friends, having a chat, having fun, just repeatedly killing Duriel with everyone's mats. It's not been unenjoyable, but I think there needs to be two things. Number one, some mild form of bad luck protection. I don't think it should go crazy. I don't think if you've not seen an Uber in a hundred tries, you should be guaranteed one, but just a steady, slow trickle increase. Maybe 0.1% more likely whenever you don't get one to get one, right? Just so you know it's technically getting easier and you can have that reassurance. And then secondly, there just needs to be a system where if you've already got an Uber unique, either in your inventory, equipped, or in your stash, the game reads that, and that one can no longer drop. Therefore, you can essentially complete your Uber Unique collection as an activity in the game. Sure, it might take killing Duriel 700 times, because typically the one that you were after was your final Uber Unique to drop, but you at least know it's guaranteed. Getting an Andariel's or a Star of Skies doesn't become a- Oh, for God, oh, come on! It becomes a- Oh, that's unlucky, but at least I've got that out the way, so the next one's more likely to be the one that I want. That, I think, is the way to go, and I think it would perfect the system that I do genuinely think is really good, and I hope to see it evolve into the future seasons and the rest of the game. So, with that all said, that is my Duriel take, and I would love to know you guys, how you're feeling? Have you gone for much farming? Has your uber unique look been good or bad? Let me know. But for now, like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe, hit the bell for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, Again, a god boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is uh goodbye.